everybody, this is Nelka Rocco again and I received an amazing comment or question from one of our YouTube subscribers and that is from Sheetal or Sheetal and she said that hi why do we change maintenance factor in any calculation anyway lighting output at the start would be 100% regardless the loss over the years okay so it's all about the maintenance factor i think she is a little confused and yeah why do we need to have a maintenance factor okay so i just answered yes it's a very good question the maintenance factor is used as a safety net for a designer and manufacturer so it will have the same lax value until such time okay like say for example three years it will have the same 500 lux for offices for example okay to make it more clear i would like to show you some of uh, these graphs and you can see this is the metal halide fluorescent and led uh, this is the operating hours of each lamp so the time for the metal halide is less up to say 15,000 hours while for the fluorescent is about 25,000 hours and for the LED is about more than 80,000 80, hours. So okay, uh, she told you might be confused why do we need to check this one. This is just one part of considering why we have a maintenance factor. So Sheetal, if you use LED, you can have a maintenance factor of 0.9, even one if you want to, if it's a clean room or if it's indoor or if it's just, yeah, something like that. You can have it one. But if you use, say, for example, fluorescent, you should make it safe. Like after three years, it should be the same lux value. So you should have 0.8, for example. And if you're going to use a metal halide, and say for example it's an industrial plant you should be safe that at least for two years you still have the same say for example 500 lux in that same industrial plant and you should have at least say for example 0.6 or 0.7 maintenance factor so the lesser the maintenance factor you put in your calculation uh, the safer and the brighter it will be on the initial operation say for example this is an office right and okay this is a meeting room and you put a maintenance factor of this one as 0.8 so this is an indoor and i'm using led i can actually create a maintenance factor for this one as one or 0.95 if i want to it will be safe even if it's th uh, three years or four years it will have the same 500 lux output because i used led because led can have up to 50,000 hours so it means like 15 years operating and it only declined a little remember this graph it only declines so little and it's only a percentage say for example it's in the 40,000 hours and we can imagine 40,000 hours divided into eight hours per day and then in two years it will have you say for example eight years or seven years it depends so even if it's um eight years you still have the same almost the same 500 lux on this room compared if you use uh fluorescent i'm sure after maybe uh eight to ten years it's all busted especially if it's metal halide because the metal halide lamp life is it's like few years only okay so that's why we need to play with the maintenance factor because um your design should be like achieving the same lux value over time like when you say 0.8 it means that the client will expect that after say for example three years for a fluorescent lamp you still have the same light in your room but if you're going to use but if you're going to use led you can have up to five to ten years and you still have the same light output so say for example in this project i have an office i have a meeting room but say for example i have an electrical room sometimes electrical room is very dirty or maybe not or let's just have say for example a toilet okay let's have some toilet here 
you can have a maintenance factor for a toilet, say 0.7 if you want. But that is if you're going to use a fluorescent lamp. But if you're going to use LED, you can make it 0.85 or 0.9 actually, even if it's dirty. Okay, so we're talking about the room now, the cleanliness and the dirtiness of a room because it is also again one factor of uh, creating a maintenance factor. Okay, let's have another table here. Okay, so this is another table and you can see that say for example a very clean room and this is the maintenance interval and then clean room, normal and this is supposed to be dirty, dirty room. Okay, so for a normal room like for example the one I showed you, the meeting room, you can have, if you want to promise that in uh, three years you still have the same lax value, then you can put a 0.79 maintenance factor or 0.8 to make it round off the regular one the standard one but if you have a project like clean room like in ha in a in a manufacturing facilities where dirt is not allowed that would be a very clean room or a clean room or in hospital where, where there is a clean room because there are some rooms like that clean room they call it clean room because it's really clean and dirt is not allowed like in laboratory for example or in a, a circuits manufacturing facilities yeah where dirt is not allowed totally is yeah you can have say 0.92 maintenance factor you can use this one and if you're going to use led of course you can make it 0.99 or one even one because it will still last long and still having the same lax value over time okay so to summarize this one i would like to uh, tell you just uh, think if you don't want to follow the standard because you're using a more efficient LED, you can make 0.9 for an indoor or 0.8, like a very safe one. Just go for the follow the standard. If it's outdoor, you can have it like 0.7. If it's LED, you can still have it 0.85. Yeah, some of our project with the sports lighting, we use 0.85 for sports lighting, even if it's so dirty outside. But if it's a road lighting, just make it more safer. Just go for 0.7 or 0.75 maintenance factor because road, of course, is very dirty. There are lots of dust every day. Okay, so always remember, look for the, the lifeline of your lamp that you're going to use and also the place where these luminaires are going to put. Only these two is fine. Imagine you have LED and you're going to put it inside, you can play it with 0.9 or 0.8 or one maintenance factor if you like. If it's outdoor, it's very dirty, and you're going to use LED, you can have it 0.85, or even if it's too dirty like in the roadway, you can have 0.75 or 0.8. This is all okay. But if you're going to use metal halide, please make it 0.6 because it will, yeah, the, the lamp will, uh, few years only okay so just think that maintenance factor is a safe way or safety net where you can promise the la the light output that you design will be last long okay another important here this is AGI 32 and you can see that they use the word uh, total LLF or this is the total light loss factor it's almost the same with the maintenance factor but this light loss factor will tell you what are those uh, percentages so it also considers the lamp lumen depreciation luminar dirt ballast factor temperature dirt this is the room surface dirt and this, these are the codes and if you want to check when you put the value here you will have a light loss factor of something else but if you don't want to consider this anymore just place 0.8 and you are done to use this luminaire as having a llf or maintenance factor of 0.8 okay but if you want to specify everything you can do it right here and for the dialax evo like what i did yes you can uh, simply uh, create your maintenance factor if it's meeting room or office yes you can have it 0.8. If, for example, you have a luminaire that cannot achieve the lax value, actually one of the cheating part of lighting design is 
you can adjust the maintenance factors. Say, for example, this one is 0.8. If I cannot achieve, for example, the 500 lakhs, so this one is 0 0.8, I can make my maintenance factor as 0 0.85 or 0 0.9 because I'm, of course, using LED. So once I adjusted it into 0 0.9, let's say 0 0.9, let's do it. You see, this one is 441, right? If I change the maintenance factor into 0 0.9, look what will happen. Okay, so you can see now it becomes 497. Previously, it's only 441. So you can see that by changing the maintenance factor, yes, it will increase the lux value. And if you want to really prove that your luminaire is really great, that it will not depreciate for, for like say 15 years. Yeah, you can use that uh, 0.9 maintenance factor. Okay, so it will depend. So let's summarize. Maintenance factor must consider the type of the room or if it's indoor or outdoor. Just always think if it's dirty or not dirty. Next, think the luminaire lumen output if it will last long or not. Okay, so there's another graph here. See, the halogen will fade easily. Metal, metal halide will be like this. Fluorescent will be like this. High pressure sodium will be up to 30,000 hours, but look at the LED, it's up to 82,000 hours. Okay, so this is another consideration. So again, the type of the room, dirty or clean or outdoor in, or indoor, and then the uh, lifeline of your luminaire that you're going to use. Sometimes you need to also consider the diffuser of the luminaire because some of the, for example, in the street light, the the cover, either plastic or glass, it becomes yellowish. So if the cover of the glass becomes uh, yellowish, then the lumen output of that street light will become lesser. So you need to also consider sometimes the materials, only the cover, okay? So yeah. So I hope you learned something today. And if you want to learn more, go and check my uh, Udemy courses about the basics of lighting design. And also, if you want to learn more about this Dialux Evo software, go and check my Udemy course about the basics of Dialux Evo for beginners and for advanced users if you want to move forward. And you can also learn how to use AGI32 because I have another course also in Udemy. It's about the basics of AGI32. And later on, we'll have also the AGI32 for advanced user. Okay, so that's it for now. And see you again on the next video. And don't forget to subscribe.